is uh, Midnight Lighting after a Jimi Hendrix song. That was our soundtrack. So imagine being your teenage years with that kind of sound check, that kind of excitement with your group, and then you're in this place. So as you stand here, it's not that you're just at this boulder, you're at these walls, at the waterfall coming down to create an incredible inspiration. There's been a rich history of bouldering here. So when we did show up, there was a lot of established boulders at that time that we could test ourselves on which were named after some of the original pioneer climbers. You know, like Leighton Core, for example, right around the corner here, there's one known as Core Boulder. And that was a test piece at the time that you would want to see if you could make. And I think that kind of tied you to the history right there because it was kind of named after this famous climber from Colorado who came here and climbed El Capitan in the 60s. And they're, they're technical little faces, you know. So you can picture these guys probably with no fancy climbing shoes necessarily, no chalk, and they're just out here practicing for the, you know, the wall they're gonna do next week or the whatever they're up to, you know, while they're waiting for their dinner to cook, come over here and see who could make it up this. Yeah, how long was like the period of time where you're the most active, like in that sense of like climbing and stuff? And yeah, it, well, Yosemite kind of went into a little um, revolution of free climbing, maybe early 70s. Jim Bridwell and Henry Barber was around, and they started just focusing more on the free climbing cliffs, like Cookie, Arch Rock, and all that, Barry Bates, do new dimensions. And then by the time we showed up, it was all kind of ready for us just to be a little more specialized. But the thing about back then, too, is we did want to do all the disciplines of climbing, the bouldering. Like, you'd go out and climb most of the day, then come back and boulder at camp. You know, it wasn't specific yet, that intense. Yes, thank you. Come on. Come on. Come on. In my memory of being here at 16, camping out in this colorful, um, inspired place of people, a lot of characters, a lot of stories, going swimming in the river, meeting people from every part of the world. There'd be your English camp, your German camp, Spanish, you know, and just wandering around here riding your bicycle. Yeah, that's been a lot of my education when people say, where did you get your education? I would say right here. This place has shaped me to who I am today. So if we were to look at the border problem as us, a little symbolic reference of a passage. Even, and that's why people are, maybe they're surprised it was done in 1978. Because there was no real boulders around it which demonstrated that. How did it come then that you opened that problem? Yeah, just timing. That was because, How did you, get the idea? you know why? I got to go on a backpacking trip with adults. What took us climbing? And I could do it pretty good. We came here and started doing all the other boulder problems. So then it, wrote, it arrived to our time. We were ready to take the little thing to the next level, right? But then, because of our little peer group, Becker and Yablonski were working on it, we started trying it together. And somehow I was the one that went over it first, right? So what's really happening here? What are we understanding with each other? If I was in 1978 climbing up this piece of rock, and now you're here, and whatever it is, 2016, you climb this piece of rock. So we hung on the same holds, and it took the same level of kind of a fitness to have at least, you know. So there's something pure about it, right? Oh, yeah. There's something very pure and, and almost humbling too, somehow. Right as it starts to rain. And those are things I first saw when I came here as a 15-year-old on the weekends, trying to do the Chenard Mantle. 
try to do the Barry Bates face. And then after some years, doing the core boat or the Pratt, whatever it was. Yeah. And then there was yeah, but Yablonski and uh, Backer standing here looking at this. And then, and you know, imagine no chalk and you're going, there's a hold there. Yeah, there's another hold there. And who knows past that, but maybe you just want to try to hang on the first holds. A lot of problems were started, as, yeah. you know, like that. Yeah, exactly. But like back in, did you guys even understand what kind of a gold mine you were sitting on? No, no, no. I had no, we had no idea. Nothing, no. no, it was just the next thing to do. <laughs> it was just the next thing to do. You really have to get a long ways past something, I think, sometimes in life to go and look at it. To realize to what you're, what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. You had a gold mine, if you want to call it that, or, or this incredible opportunity of timing. Yeah.